that um, um, material there are materials I'm going to share and I'll share with you. So I'm going to start with the first um, picture now. Okay, I don't know if we can see what is on the screen. Yes, we can see, we can see it. Out. All right. So I'll just want someone to attempt it and then we'll discuss thereafter. So who's going to attempt? I can't see the screen anymore, so I can't see the participants. So um, someone just have to, so that we move and do as much as possible today. Any volunteers? Actually, I don't even know what the picture is. About. Is it very visible? Or is small, maybe the way I put my phone so I can rotate my screen. Is, is it visible? Yes, it's visible, yes, yes. but there's no question. We don't have options A to E. And it, yeah, it, those it, are it okay, a white diagram. Okay, this uh... okay. All right. So um okay, this is it. Uh, well uh, so okay, let me just go ahead. Let's not uh, waste time. So this is what a crucifix looks like. I don't know if you've heard about a crucifix before. No, ma'am. Okay. So there's something called a crucifix. And it's used in um, neonatology. In, um, yes. Basically used in, in neonates. Can you please spell it? Okay, so crucifix, C U C R U, sorry, C R U C I F I X. Okay, so this you. is what it looks like. Now, this is the ideal prototype, but of course, um, in this part of the world, we do a lot of makeshifts. Improve, we improvise, you know, if we don't have the ideal. Um, equipment. So essentially, it's just um, um, an equipment that is like a cross, just like the name crucifix. It's like a cross. Essentially, it's to put um, in units. Um, you put a unit on it, and then you restrain, so, so to speak, restrain the unit so that you can carry out the procedure that you want to carry out. So why I put this here is because it's linked to uh, a procedure done in um, neonatology, which is a uh, exchange blood transfusion. I don't know if you've heard about it before. Yes, yes, we know exchange. We must, we must have heard about it, definitely. So yes, it's just the crucifix. Uh, yes, most of you must have trained outside. So maybe exchange blood transfusion is not so popular there. They do more of the other one other management for um, neonatal jaundice, but here for other reasons, we have you know a higher rate of carrying out this procedure, exchange blood transfusion. And that is why you need to know what a crucifix is. So, like I said, it is this um, um, equipment where you put a baby, you restrain the baby. It could actually look like a cross, you know, uh, there are different forms, but this is what the ideal one should look like. So the questions attached to this question are just, you know, to test your knowledge on the procedure. So that's what a picture test usually looks like. They'll put a picture, they may not ask you directly on the picture, you know, directly about what is this. They would want to, first of all, you have to identify what this picture is all about. After you identify it, then you now answer the questions. So this is the way it's usually is, the picture by the side and then the A to E uh, question. So now with this knowledge, can someone now attempt um, this question? The answer is E. No, okay, sorry. This is multiple choice. It's not best, um, best, uh, 
best out of the best of four or best of five? Several. I was supposed to pick several answers. Okay, so um, for multiple choice questions, sorry, I'm not uh, conversant with the way the, I don't know. So when you take um, picture tests, is it um, best you pick just one option? Is that the way it is? Usually, yes, doctor, it's just one option. Right. Okay, so I'll take note, maybe the next one subsequently. Okay, so multiple choice question just means every option needs either a true or a false. You must answer every option. So there's nothing like choosing um, B or D or E. That one is called best of four. So for um, this um, picture test, yeah, usually each alphabet is a question on its own. So you answer, is that true or it is false? I don't know if that's clear. Is that clear? Yes, yes, it's clear. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so let me, I think I'm going to have to, maybe subsequently. So let me um, um, take, an, um, take maybe take this one so that we would understand what I mean. So now, I, like I said, the picture is a crucifix and crucifix is usually associated with a, or it's a procedure, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's an equipment used to restrain a baby for exchange or transmission usually, or any other procedure you want to do. So A says cord um, hemoglobin of 10% or less is an indication. So essentially now this question is, what are the indications of EBT? You need to have a good knowledge of your indications for exchange blood transfusion for you to be able to answer this question. So a cord blood of 10% or less is an indication for exchange blood transfusion. That's what they're asking. So is it true or false? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, I agree with you, it's true, it is true. So when a baby is born and then cord blood is taken, you know, a cord blood um, is taken for PCV assay and it's at that point, it is 10% or less, it means that that is anemia and it is highly suggestive of uh, a hemolytic process because babies usually should have PCV higher than uh, from 40 and above, 40 to 60% like that. But if you're already having a cord load of 10% or less, it tells you there's anemia. So it is telling you that as that time the baby is born, already there's anemia, meaning something must have hemolyzed the blood. Do you understand? Usually resource high to immunization, all of that. But so when you do your cord blood is less than 10%. It's an indication for you to do exchange blood transfusion. I don't know if that's clear. Yes, doctor. Yes. Oh. Please feel free to stop me at any point if um, you're not clear. So now let's go to the op option um, B. It says heart failure is a complication. So for exchange blood transfusion, heart failure is a complication. What do we think? All right. So let me let me juggle. Let me just you know give us a uh, maybe a tip. When you are doing, just think of exchange blood transfusion is a type of transfusion, right? Am I correct? It's a type of transfusion. Yeah. Yes. It's a type of transfusion and you're using blood. And as with all other types of transfusions, you can either overload the patient. You can actually overload the patient. And when you overload the patient, heart failure is a complication. So you can see for these questions, they are not going to give, it's not going to be, you know, straightforward. It's what you need to do a lot of interpretation by yourself and extrapolation. So heart failure is a complication, you know, not because of the procedure, but because of the complication of what you are doing, which is transcription. So that's going to be true as well. I don't know if we are clear. Yes, we are. Doctor. 
Yes, ma'am. Do we have any questions at this point? No. no. No, all right. So let's take C. Eh? Hemorrhage is both a complication and an indication for its use. So let's take the first part of that C. Hemorrhage is both a complication. Hemorrhage is a complication. So they're asking us for this exchange of transfusion, is hemorrhage a complication? What do we think? Exchange blood transfusion, just think about it. Picture it happening and then think, is it possible this child would bleed? No, ma. Hello? Uh, well, I think this child would bleed. Who agrees with him that the child cannot bleed? Chat, the child can bleed. Yes. So, you know, in exchange of transfusion, just think about it's a whole is a whole uh, procedure. First of all, you are going to um, insert a catheter, an umbilical catheter, into that um, umbilical uh, vessel, right? Now, when you are doing that, can't you perforate something there? Yes, you can, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, so you can perforate an organ, you can even be, you know, perforate, um, you can perforate anything, the child can bleed. The child may have any, if anything is possible, the child may have uh, bleeding disorders, like the um, clotting disorders, it can bleed. So it's a, the tr first part of that question is very, very true. It's possible. Now, the second part, um, is okay, sorry, it's a complication true, uh, yeah, and an indication for its use. So what, what do we think? Is the um, hemorrhage an indication for us to do an exchange? The child that is bleeding, do we do exchange? Yes. yes. Let's see. Okay, so why do you think so? Is there something, uh, is there a condition that made you say yes? Hemophilia, for example. Is there um, something? Yeah. Eight. I'm listening. Uh, if the child has lost a lot of blood, we definitely need uh, yes. the exchange. Okay. So again, going back to resource, I say transition. Or let me see. Let me think of um, kephal hematoma. Huh? So in, 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 let me go with kephal hematoma because that's more likely. Now in kephal hematoma, what happens? Blood just gathers in the, um, in the cranial somewhere there. You understand? Now that blood can be hemolyzed. So there is bleeding, right? that will be complicated by jaundice that will now result in you needing to do an EBT, an exchange blood transfusion. So yes, I agree with you that hemorrhage is both a, uh, is an indication as well. It's not every hemorrhage, just like maybe somebody caught a child and the child just exsanguinated and you now carry that child and start doing EBT, no? Do you understand what I mean? But any hemorrhage that, you know, there are hemorrhages that can, you know, be complicated with neonatal jaundice, and then that will be an indication. So I agree, uh, hemorrhage is both a complication and an indication for its use. Do we understand that point? Yes. 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 All right. So let's take D. Eh? Necrotizing neck is a um, necrotizing enterocolitis. I'm sure we are conversant with that uh, term. So necrotizing enterocolitis is an absolute contraindication. Do we agree? First of all, is necrotizing enterocolitis a contraindication? What do we think? What is necrotizing yes, enterocolitis? Okay, okay. So why do you think necrotizing enterocolitis is? Yeah, let me help us. I think it's almost 20 minutes. Okay, so necrotizing enterocolitis is like, it's, um, it's a condition in units where 
there is um, bleeding in the intestine due to infection, ischemia, and other things, right? We're not going to do that one today. So it's, it's an indication because now, when you are doing the procedure, when you pass your catheter, you know, that's pulling, we, in the EBT, we do this push and pull. So we pull some um, volume of blood out and then we push it. We keep doing it over and over until we have exchanged twice that child's blood volume. Now, for every time you pull blood out, then you, you know you are pulling blood out. Look at, um, think of the, mes the mesenteric vessels. You are pulling blood out. There will be a period of like ischemia. So a child that already has necrotizing enterocolitis, an issue with the intestine, you are now still further complicating, do you understand, taking blood, causing ischemia is going to really complicate that child's problem. So I think, yes, it is an absolute contraindication. Yeah, A child that is necrot having necrotizing, you won't say, ah, oh, there's jaundice, let's go and catch that child and do um, a necrotize, um, sorry, extreme blood transfusion. Do we get? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Also, just now, by extension, a child who has omphalitis, you know you are going to go into the um, umbilical vessel. A child who has omphalitis, there's infection there. It's an indication. Now, whether it is absolute or relative is what we're going to, that's our assignment. So from um, after today, you're just going to read um, indications of exchange blood transfusion contractions of extreme blood transfusion, and then just have an idea of what the procedure is all about, the complications that can arise from this procedure. Then let's take a cord bilirubin being of 5% um, or more is an indication. What do we think? Actually, it should be five milligram per day. What do we think? You assay a child's bilirubin, and they call the bilirubin, and you're getting five milligrams at that time the child is born. What do we think? Yes. 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 It's, it's elevated, right? It's elevated. Yes? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Yes, it is. It is. Called bilirubin, first day, you're already getting five milligrams. It tells you... <laughs> Hemolysis is happening, and before the 24th uh, hour of life, that bilirubin is likely going to be high. So in summary, everything here is true. So just juggle our brains. Let's go and um, read about exchange blood transfusion. It's a procedure that is commonly done here, um, though now obsolete um, well, another part of the world. But for us here, for some other reasons, I'm not going to discuss that. It's not within our scope today. We still have to... Um, do exchange blood transfusion. So this is the next question. So that's the pattern we're going to be going. 